Innocent Bank will be amongst the first from the banking pack to report earnings for the December quarter. The lender is likely to report a steady top line and bottom line growth, but slippages and exposure to some stressed groups will be keenly high. Shefali Malik is standing by to tell us what's expected. And Shefali, it's a very important stock considering the last couple of days, the trading interest that has come into it as well with the expectations of maybe a slip here and there. First, what are the headline numbers likely to be as per the poll? And then what should one watch out for? Well, the numbers are expected to be steady for Indescent Bank and considering this will be the last quarter of Ramesh Sopti reporting earnings. So maybe we are in for some positive surprises. So we look forward to that. Headline numbers first, uh, the NII is seen at 3,041 crores, PPOP at 2,649 crores and PAT at about... Uh, 1403 odd crores that will be a growth of 1.4 percent on a sequential basis remember because of the merger of bharat financials we're not looking at the yoy numbers uh, but on a, if we have to include the, uh, i mean consider the yoy numbers the profit growth will be very strong about 42 percent other than that the basic metrics loan growth is seen at about six percent on a sequential basis and 20 percent on a yoy basis deposit growth 25 percent and um, uh, on a sequential basis it'll be six percent so it's matching uh, at least in percentage terms, the growth shown by HDFC Bank, the both loan and deposit growth. Uh, so that will be a um, strong number in, in the current scenario where we know what the systemic credit growth uh, is currently at. But relative to their own historical performance, the numbers uh, are uh, a bit on the lower side. You look at their loan growth in past couple of quarters, it was anywhere around 28-30% in last many quarters. Deposit growth as well has come off a bit. Um, in, in this particular quarter, even in Q2, it was 23% versus 26, 28% in, in the previous two quarters. So, so a, bit, a bit lesser, mm -hmm. uh, but still, you know, relatively, uh, but still strong on in the current context, in the current uh, macroeconomic environment. So still uh, going strong uh, in comparison to the whole system. Other than that, asset quality will be really key to watch out for. Till now, we were not seeing DHFL being accounted for, but from this quarter onwards, uh, banks will start to see DHFL coming in as an NPA. Uh, into their books. So slippage on that account is likely to weigh in on the credit costs. Other than that, we look forward to some slippages from the mid-corporate segment from them and consumer segment, uh, especially on the CV side, credit cards if, if they start to show any signs of stress and the lab portfolio. And they had spoken about three stressed group exposure, but they had managed to gain some control over that with, with the same coming down to 1.1% at the second quarter versus 1.67 in the Q1. So whether they manage to bring down that further uh, will be interesting to see and uh, they're also one of the banks where the provisioning coverage ratio is is much lower than the um, than the ideal ratio it's about 50 percent and um, so uh, they are trying to get it to 60 percent and just a few days back there was a report by Bank of America Merrill Lynch saying that in this quarter itself uh, the bank may actually show that up to 60 percent so if that happens the profit number may look much below what the consensus expectation is because uh, I s ran through a couple of reports yesterday what is being factored in is something like a provisioning coverage ratio 52 to 53 percent so 60 percent will be much higher so that is one key figure that we should look forward to because that will be a straightaway dent on the bottom line yeah would the market take it positively or negatively is the question right because positively, uh, positively. the market has been wanting the provision coverage ratio to move yeah. up for a while now because they've been below uh, what the general consensus is hmm. what else should one watch out for Shefali when it comes what where could the surprise come in. I think uh, dealers over the last couple of days have been talking about how the numbers uh, could show uh, a hint of weakness. Would it be around this provision coverage ratio and the net profit number or could it be something else also? It could be around asset quality. That could be the only um, negative surprise. Anything in the commercial real estate portfolio or a commercial vehicle side has already been weak or anything coming from the mid corporate segment because they also have uh, quite a bit of um, you know those loans on their book so these two mid corporate segment commercial real estate all these books will be watched out for <laughs>